Hi, are we alone in the universe? No, seriously, I mean, are we ever alone anywhere? Say if you go into space where there is no air, no atmosphere, it's a complete vacuum, are you still alone? No, actually. Even though space is a complete vacuum, one thing will never leave your side. Atoms. Yes, even though space is a very high quality vacuum, there are a few hydrogen atoms spread it per cubic meter on average. Isn't it amazing that something so tiny, so inconceivable, is responsible for everything? Plants, animals, the entire ecosystem, yourself, our families, our friends, the air we breathe, and our memories, which makes us what we are is nothing but just a bunch of atoms. Without atoms, nothing of these would exist. We would have no purpose in life. In fact, we would have no life. A human cell has 100 trillion atoms. And there are same number of human cells in a human body, which means that each one of us is a walking, talking 7 billion, billion, billion atoms or seven octillion atoms so if everything around us is just a bunch of atoms if i cut a piece of paper does it mean i am cutting atoms existence of atoms was conceived at around 400 bc by the greek philosopher democritus and he assumed that the atoms were not only inconceivable they were also physically indivisible hmm indivisible huh okay let's see why hasn't everything in nature decayed yet? I mean, everything is subject to irreversible decay, right? But the nature somehow has the mechanism to bring everything back to life or all the matter back in its original, in its pure form. Like if I seed an oak and it grows out to be an oak tree, which has the wood of the same historical oak trees, which has been decayed in the past. So there must be something inside, something that is not subject to decay and something which somehow eternally stores the inherent indivisible properties of matter. Now this something was hypothesized as atoms. Hmm, amazing, right? But this was thought by the Roman poet and philosopher Lucretius back in 1 century BC. How about that now? It's amazing to be in the mind of a philosopher. But not only that atoms were thought to be indivisible, it was also the human mind which was deemed indivisible. René Descartes, a French philosopher who is also famous for inventing the Cartesian coordinate system, was of the view that the mind and body are distinct. And even though any part of the body could be amputated, nothing could be taken away from our minds because the mind lacks physical extension, unlike the body which is extended and physically occupies space. So this philosophy where the mind can exist without a body is called the Cartesian or substance duality. And this problem is famously called the mind-body problem. Antonio Damasio, in his famous book, Descartes' Error, Emotions, Reason and the Human Brain, discusses that the feelings in our body are associated with emotions which arises from our minds. Like rapid heartbeat is associated with anxiety or nausea with disgust. Such feelings are called somatic markers. Now, does this solve the problem of indivisibility of mind? Maybe not yet because we have not been able to empirically identify any connection between the non-physical mind to its physical extension, the body, which still remains problematic to this dualism. But the way in which we solve the indivisibility of atoms might show us how we may be able to solve this mind-body problem. So the word atom comes from the Greek word atoms, which literally meant uncuttable, and is also usually translated indivisible. And until the discovery of quantum mechanics, the question of whether the matter is infinitely divisible or whether the matter can be cut into smaller and smaller parts indefinitely were considered the same. 
there was no difference between these two conundrums. But we now know that atoms are uncuttable, meaning we cannot cut space into smaller parts which corresponds to any single part of an atom. But the atoms are indeed divisible because we know that the atoms are made up of protons and neutrons which are in turn made up of quarks and gluons and it also has electrons. So a further understanding of mind and body may solve this problem given reasonable time to invent new technologies which could understand science in ways we never could. And even at that time, one thing will always be by our side, atoms. So thank you to atoms for making this world, you all, YouTube and this video possible. Hope I struck some atoms in you to hit the like button and see you again with a new thought. This is Jim signing off. Now if you did like the content and wish to subscribe, to never miss any content, please follow this procedure showing how to subscribe. If you do not click the bell besides the subscribe button, you wouldn't be notified about my new video uploads. So even if you are subscribed, please hit the bell besides the subscribe button. Thank you so much.